Welcome to HeartSpeak Podcast, episode 87. Honest Review Brings Change. I can't believe how these lunar phases have been lining up so perfectly in my mind with what's going on in the world. Now, I shouldn't be surprised because that's why we're sharing these together. We're moving through different phases every 28, 29 days. And yet, each time when I prepare a podcast, I think, wow, that's so accurate. So here we are in the last quarter moon phase. I saw it this morning. And this is all about review and reevaluate. So this is a time not to start something new, or there again, if you're in the midst of that, keep going, but to look back over the last few, I'm going to say weeks, but even months, even years, lifetimes, and say, what is it that I'm going to carry forward? What am I releasing? What has given me joy? And what is nurturing my soul at this time? And it can't be even more accurate than what's happening in the other stars. So here we are on the 13th with Mars, which is passion and war in Pisces meeting Neptune in Pisces. So Neptune is about mystical, it's about misty sometimes, illusion, not knowing which way to turn, but it's also been in Pisces, so, or it is in Pisces, and therefore it's also exposing the places where we are separate. Pisces is about coming together, interconnectedness. And Neptune has, in its own way, been showing us sometimes where we are caught up in an illusion of unification, but not really there. And so on the 13th and really leading up to that, which is now, Mars and Jupiter, uh, excuse me, Mars and Neptune coming together, have been saying is, yes, let's get together. Let's break down separation. Let's get rid of prejudice. Let's get rid of racism. But it, it can be so passionate and we can find ourselves charging off in a direction. But because it's Neptune, sometimes we think, where are we going? What's going on? What's the objection? So again, it's been, don't let our passions override the clarity of where we're going. Have that intention. And I think that's going to become more and more clear. Now, if you've listened back to some of my other podcasts and we've been talking about 2020, <laughs> someone said this morning, are we still only in 2020? Yes, just at the beginning or we're still just around the middle. Wow, what a year this is and, and truly it has not finished. But in this time, as I've always said, we're heading towards what we call the second transit between Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn. At the same time, Saturn is moving its way back, retrograde, back into Capricorn. Now, we had one transit of Jupiter and Pluto, but always what we call the second one, where the two planets going retrograde is always the more powerful. And that's happening at, at, right at the end of this month, and then June 1st, sec, uh, July 1st, 2nd. But we're going to feel it two weeks before the end of this month. Oh, we're nearly there. What does this mean? Jupiter is expanding. Pluto is about transformation, but she's also about exposing that which has been hidden for so long. So we've done exercises, we've done meditations where we've dived deep into saying, what are my gems? What are, what are the things that have not been exposed to me, what have been hidden to me. But it's also bringing it to the surface, everything that is being hidden for, I'm going to say, thousands of years. We're not just talking about a few hundred years or even just a decade. Everything that's gone on in secret, under the, under the surface, is coming to the surface. And this is why all is happening now. Uh, Black Lives Matter, the, the killing of George Floyd, it's bringing to the surface 
the inequalities, the prejudices, the racism, everything that's happened. But I want to keep saying this is much bigger than, if I may say, just looking at the racism against blacks. It's about the racism or the prejudices for anyone who has had their rights taken away from them, their equality taken away from them, their respect or their honoring. And that includes just even in this country that I live in now, the US, or in any country, the, the First Nation people, it can include in any country, women and children are trafficked. It can include any type of racism that's occurred in any society, in any religion, anywhere where something has been done to suppress one group, shame one group, send one group into, into exile, it's all coming to the surface. And this is huge for us. And it's not just looking back, even though I'm saying this is, we could keep going back and saying it's happened there and there and there and there. But we also need to say what is going on now in, in right in front of us and we're not seeing. So I know I mentioned in a couple of pod, pod, podcasts back about puppeteers, magicians. This is asking us all not to, if I may say, get lost in the initial reaction to something, but to ask ourselves, what is the truth? What is the honest review of this situation? Can I both feel it and know what needs to change? Otherwise, we are just going to put a cover over something, put a band-aid over something and move on. That, that we must never do that. And if things are coming to the surface, we need to also ask ourselves, why is that happening? And what can we do with that? And this brings me back to, it's almost as if I keep wanting to say, now let's look at the big picture again. Because unless we hold on to what the big picture is, where are we going? Why are we here? Not just why are you here on this earth, but why are we here as humanity at this time? And maybe it's just my story, but I don't think it is. I believe we are in this amazing time of transformation. If you don't believe me, <laughs> just look out into the world. But we are in this time of transformation. Predictive, as I keep saying, way back that this was going to happen. The 2020s, early 2020s, is going to be challenging because we're in this between times, on the edge of chaos. In fact, many of us are in the chaos. But this edge of chaos is the place of new birth, new growth. So the old world, the old world with all its rules, its beliefs, its behaviors are all dissolving. Now, I'm you trying to be careful because if we choose to hang on to those, that's the world we're going to live in. But we're being offered a new world. And what I've been heard, what I've been taught is we cannot take or we are being asked not to take the old ways into the new world. I think we would all agree that. And I think that's what we're all being asked to look at. What is it that you want to take into the new world and what is it you're prepared to leave in the old world? Or at least take the best of it. So what's happening is everything that holds us in that old world is coming up to be looked at. And some of it we don't certainly don't want to see and some of it we haven't owned. And again, you might say, well, they're the same thing. They are. What have we not owned? What of me have I not owned? What of my past have I not owned? What of my history have I not owned? And I'm going to come to that. But we are moving. The new world represents three things. Unity through the acceptance of diversity. Unity through the acceptance of diversity. Acceptance, that's the big word. Can we all <clears throat> see ourselves as part of a whole, but all of us carry our uniqueness? Whatever that is, pieces of the jigsaw. Can we all be a unique part of a jigsaw that comes together because without that, this jigsaw will never be complete? 
Second, can we accept that because the veils have fallen between us, between the dimensions, we can no longer say, I can do something, think something, say something without it feeling the effects of my words, my actions on another person. I spoke about this last time. This is not about, oh, I feel so sorry I hurt you. This is, I feel the hurt. I feel this. It, there's no barrier between how can I emphasize my care for you while separating myself from the feeling. This will change our world. When we really understand that everything we do to another person, we do unto ourselves. And the biggest concern has been about AI is that once we have drones or robots that choose to go to war, or we choose to send to war, there will no longer be a human unless, apart from the one who is directing the drones. We need to stay in touch with each other. Only then will we know what is worth going to war for, if anything. What, uh, what behaviors are okay anymore? Once we start separating ourselves and allow robots to do our will, we have separated from each other. The very thing that makes us the amazing spiritual beings we are. The third thing is that we are stepping into our multidimensionality. I've spoken about this and about how the virus Again, I won't get into the where it's come from, etc. But let us see the virus as a messenger, a messenger that's waking us up to our interdimensional nature, waking up that junk DNA. But as it wakes that up, it's waking everything up. It can't say, oh, I'm just going to pick and choose the bits I like. So imagine that this coronavirus has come in and is waking us up to everything again that we have wanted to hide in a closet or wanted not to own. And it's been intensified by the fact that we went into lockdown, again, an amazing feat that the whole world were going to lockdown. But in that lockdown, it's isolated us from each other, but also from things that might distract us in the outer world. In other words, we, this virus has got us in touch with the things that really matter to us and the things that don't. And we're now in the stage where as we wake up, as we see ourselves as not just human beings, although we are that, this multidimensional part of me now says, well, hang on, I'm not my color, my religion, my culture. <clears throat> I'm much bigger than that. How does that play out? Could we even believe a world where violence and war and hatred were part, weren't part of that? And, and you say, yes, that's how I live my life. Absolutely, I'm delighted. But what if that behavior is not seen as bad or good as we've been taught it to be, but rather, why are people doing that? Why? Why would you do that to another human? Or why would you do it to yourself? Do you, do you see like I do that what I say to my body about, well, it's not looking good or the way I talk to myself, it's not very kind. How, if we could see how, not even how we treat other people, but how we treat ourselves and say, that isn't very multidimensional. If there was no separation between our thoughts and our actions on ourselves, imagine what that's like. I see it because that's how it manifests, in, manifests into disease. What we think about ourselves ends up expressing itself in the physical body, expressing itself in the outer world. There is no separation now between our thoughts and what we see. Our perception of our reality is coming directly from what we think. So how do we change those thoughts? We change those thoughts not by thinking differently, praying differently or having affirmations. It's by making changes within our daily life, making the changes that really matter to us, living as if we are different. And we can't do that if we don't have the awareness of anything different than we've been brought up with. 
education should not be about, we don't need to educate our children about how they should be. Education should be an explosion of information that allows us to explore what's out there. Education is not telling people what to do. It's a teaching them how to reason, how to explore, how to feel confident enough to take risks, how to step outside the boundaries of what is known. That's the education I want to see for the future. To explore, to make mistakes is not wrong or right. And that is where we are, I believe, expanding. That is what our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are saying. Don't teach me stuff that is going to be out of date in five years' time. Teach me to explore. Teach me to question. Teach me to look at things in different ways. Teach me to meet people who are different from me. That's education. And to me as a doctor, that's what I went into medicine for. Not to teach, but to guide you, me, back to my wholeness. Allowing illness to be the guide that says, wake up to something that wasn't seen before. And so we are in this amazing time and I wanted to share it that way first because I want to say is keep your bigger picture. Everything expanding, everything is so much mystery is coming into our life. But also at the same time, the opportunity through the Jupiter-Pluto in Capricorn <clears throat> to actually say, what doesn't, what doesn't work for me anymore? What rules, what beliefs? Capricorn is about structure. What structure is limiting me rather than, than giving me a foundation for growth? Jupiter is about expansion, enthusiasm. Where am I boxed in? By the rules where am I not allowed to go anywhere and as I say that that isn't about well let me just walk across any rules because once we step outside man-made rules there are universal rules universal laws and that isn't about someone telling you to do something right or wrong it's it's the what we know, do unto others as you do to yourself. That which you do to others will be done to yourself. It's just how the world lasts, it lives. There is no separation. And so we are moving into a time that we probably never really considered is, is healthy relationships. Not from a place of, uh, what can I say, you know, I'll be a nice person to you. It's how do we have a healthy relationship with each other, with ourselves, with the planet, with the stars, with other people, with nature. It's about reciprocal relationships. And we're, bringing, we're coming in that direction. And it's about respect and honoring ourselves. And first, I need to do that for myself. So I thought a lot about this podcast. And I have been privileged to be, look at my privileges. I've been privileged to look at my injustices. And I thank everyone for being able to hear me now. I feel as if sharing this on a podcast is me sharing who I am. I am, you might look at me and say you're very privileged, and I would agree. I'm privileged to be white. I'm privileged to be a woman. Some might say, no, that isn't a privilege, but it is for me. I'm privileged to be British. I'm privileged to know where I come from. That isn't true for everybody. I can take my genealogy back 1,500 years, at least. I'm privileged to be educated. I'm privileged to have a nice house. I'm privileged to be able to travel. I'm privileged to be married. And I own those privileges. And you might say, well, you are a very privileged person. You should... Be ashamed of your privileges. If it helps you, I'll say, hey, I am. But I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm not ashamed because if being ashamed of who I am doesn't help you one bit, doesn't help anybody. Now, as a Brit, I can certainly tell you that 
I have been both privileged and I have brought terror to many different nations over thousands of years. And I am sorry for that. I apologize for that. And I could say, well, yes, but my Scottish and my Irishness was also suppressed by the English. But I'm not into a spitting contest. I don't think that helps. I don't think it helps for me to say, yes, but my life's not been easy. You don't care about that. Who cares? It's my story. If you want to share your story, if you want to share how you feel, as I said last time, you tell me. I'll sit. I'll listen. If you want a hug, I'll give you a hug. If you want to rant at me, you rant at me. But ultimately, I'm not, anything I may do isn't actually going to help you feel better about yourself until you make that choice. I could speak about how I give money here or there. Again, first of all, who cares? Secondly, that's just patronization or arrogance. You don't need to hear. I don't need to share that. That was like solving my conscience. I don't need to share that. What I need to say is that those so-called privileges, and I'll accept they are, have nothing to do with who I am. The privileges that I have learned to value through this time of being in the cocoon, of being able to look at this, this deep review, honest review, I'll tell you what my privileges are. I was brought up in a loving family. I was wanted as a child. I was brought up in a faith that was very humble and believed in a loving God. I never knew there was hell and damnation. I was brought up in a community when whoever you were didn't matter. You came together to serve, to care, and everybody had value in this, value to what they brought to the community. I was brought up in a family who valued education. But they valued it not again from the school, but from allowing me to take risks, to explore life, to enter into places that maybe in my more esoteric world or my psychic world would have been risky for other people. But my parents always said, we're allowing, we're taking you to places to listen to others, to listen to other points of view, so you can make choices of what resonates with you. I was brought up in a family where it was instilled in me, nobody is better, nobody's worse. It wasn't therefore that my parents felt that we lorded over anybody. I never knew that I should be looking down on people or looking up to people. Didn't mean it didn't happen, my friends. I'm not, in, I'm not saying that, but it wasn't what I was taught. I wasn't taught to hate or be hated. And I will say they are my privileges. My parents took risks. My family took risks. And travel is a big part of that. Meeting other people. How privileged I was to meet so many different people from different cultures, different religions, different colors. Because it showed me there are different worlds. But I was also privileged to go and sit and listen to people who had stories to tell that weren't part of my story. And why was that a privilege? First of all, I was humbled by that. I grew by that. I could support that. Why? Because I wasn't moving in to someone else's world with my own woundedness. I, the biggest privilege I've ever known is to know that I was loved. The biggest privilege was knowing not just that I was loved by my parents, but I've never been disconnected from the spirit world. And you might say, well, so what? I'll say, I've never known that I wasn't part of something much bigger. I've never, I've never known what it wasn't, what it's like not to live by this connectivity. Am I saying, oh, I was always just love? No. 
I'm saying is whenever anything happened to me, it, I knew it wasn't being done out of, ah, I knew nothing was being done to me. Even if I at the moment didn't understand why I was going through some pain or suffering, I never believed it was because I was a bad person or, or I was disconnected or I was separate. I never believed that. And you know what one of the hardest things for me is? Not because I see people through their color or their religion. Again, if you want to tell me about that, that's absolutely fine. But because I can see into the soul level, my greatest distress is when I see the disconnect between the love that is available to everyone and to the individual who, who cannot feel that love. Am I saying I pity them? No. But my journey is to say that love is there. That love is so close in our world, right in front of us. And my question would be, whoever told us that we were disconnected, whoever told us we were unloved. Because it didn't happen with our parents. It didn't happen with our, again, different circumstances. This is way back. This is thousands of years of disconnect. And I hope that if nothing more, my privilege of knowing that I am loved and connected is available to you and that you, if you know that already, that you will pass that on to others. That is the greatest gift that we can give. Not money, not apology, but encouragement. Encouragement, opportunity, equal opportunity. How do, how can I help Everyone I meet know that love. And it's not just by giving, it's about how do I as a true doctor lead someone back to their truth, their essence, their soul. Reconnect them. That's all I can do, all any of us can do. And in this, I hope we change the stories we let go of the beliefs that are damaging that talk about separation it doesn't mean i'm not i'm not saying it hasn't happened but those stories have to end with us whatever we need to do now to put to to end those stories let's do it whatever it takes Whatever anybody needs for us to end the stories, the teaching, the way in which we've lived for thousands of years to say we are separate. We're separate from our soul. We're separate from each other. We're separate from our God. We're separate from the un universal love that's available. These stories have to end now. So I ask if you would like to share with me on a meditation, just a simple one. If you're in the right place to do that, and I ask you just to close your eyes. And I ask you just to take a few nice breaths, as always, short breath in, long breath out. Coming into your body making that first connection between mind and body, just to be body and mind together. And now take your awareness to your heart chakra, center of your chest. And imagine your heart chakra as the most beautiful flower And that you are able to be very small 
and settle into the center of that beautiful flower. And you feel, you feel the softness of the petals. You may smell the aroma of your flower. And you're nesting into it, nesting into this flower as if it was the most comfortable chair you've ever nested into. You're relaxing. And as you do, nesting deeper, smelling, seeing the beautiful color, feeling the fabric on your body, you're feeling the love your soul has for you. And it's almost like you're falling. I'm falling. We're falling deeper and deeper in love with ourselves. There's no limit. And as we're held in that love, we feel the presence of many beautiful beings around us. And they're showering us with love. Some of you, it may be more color, some of you may be more petals. Maybe it's just a feeling of love. A deep sense of being known and seen for exactly who you are and there is no separation, no judgment, just we know you, we love you. Just bring that love around you, not just your heart now, but through your whole body, every cell. Just breaking open any place where there's, that have blocked that love, where love can't get in. See the color, see the smell, see the touch. Dissolve those blockages those doors, letting love in. Especially our minds. There's nothing wrong with our thoughts in any way. When we bring love in, some of those thoughts may dissolve because they no longer are relevant to the life we wish to lead. Now gently bring your awareness back to your heart chakra again. If you want, you can place your hand on your heart just to anchor that love in, make sure it's there for you forever, that connection. And then to gently, gently feel yourself back in the room where you are. And in your own time to open your eyes. I hope and wish everything that is beautiful for all of you. As Pluto and Jupiter come together, I feel for myself that by sharing with you today, I've dissolved away things that I've been ashamed to talk about. And they may have been things that you had said you may not understand, and that's okay. I am myself, and I 
see you and know you in your wholeness. And in being true to ourselves, whatever that is, is the greatest gift we can give anybody that we meet. Many blessings to you all. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the HeartSpeak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all HeartSpeak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. HeartSpeak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and now playing on iHeartRadio. You can also watch the archive podcasts on YouTube. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, including her newest Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of HeartSpeak.